the real side of H-Town. 97.9 The Box is the Mad Hatcher. Morning show. My partner is in the building, y'all. Dr. Ian is in the house. What's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? What's up? First, before we get into the book, The Ancient Nine, by the way, you gave me this book months ago. So, Hatter, you got to read it. It's my novel. I'm doing it different. No exercise, nothing. I'm out of that. You know, that other book I told you we need to go back to, but I we'll know. talk about that another time. But this is the main book we'll talk about in a minute. But when you see Dr. Eden, you got to start talking about food and bodybuilding, blah, blah, blah. So, the last time I seen him, I was like 230-odd pounds. Uh-huh. So, I've lost 20 pounds. Not on purpose. My kid went vegan out the blue. She got tired of doing the meat thing. So, you know, trying to be a proper father, right? You try to copy and mimic your kid because you can't let your kid shine out, you know, shine bright. Yeah. So, you try to do the right thing. So, I lost all this weight, man. So, it's blowing my mind because I just found out how light I really was. And I guess I should have known when none of the clothes fit anymore. Well, first of all, you got to ask yourself, what do you really want? Do you want to look like Hulk Hogan? You no. know, here's, here's nah. what you here's what every guy wants, right? Okay, you want to look good for your lady when, when the clothes come off, you want her to look at you and go. You, Hot damn. Well, you gonna yeah. tell me that your girl thinks you look better then than now? Now you got I've the never, you got the swole, but you also got the ab cut. You, you got, got the, the ab, you the got ab the, game is is it's a, tight. It's it's nice, man. I, I mean I'm a, I mean listen, I, I respect I respect another dude, right? You got a real V. That's what you want. As, Shut up. What's you that got mean? The, the you v, got a V shape. Oh, yeah. you know, right? Down for the big Yeah, yeah. No, wide shoulders. Yeah, wide shoulders. And then you come down to to a tight waist. Right above the belt. I mean you know what? Oh, no, no, I know she's talking about. Yeah, 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 I know she's talking no, about. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's like, it's like that. Yeah, I know yeah, what you yeah. mean. Is. That's, me. the mid, that's the mid-V. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's something about. else. That's a little something extra for the ladies. <laughs> yeah, right. But I don't want to do you like that, Jazz. We're co-workers. And <laughs> I don't need you. I don't know if you're thirsting your boy that's while right, he's trying to get right. his work on. And you it's know? the wrong time. This is the wrong era to be doing that kind of thing, right? You better believe it, my brother. You best to believe it. All right, but thank you, man. You know, because you always come around here trying to teach us about work out and mostly eating right and most yeah. of it came from eating correctly absolutely no doubt about it you know and it's not that hard too by the way once you start going and once you start doing it, it becomes a way of life it becomes a way of life it becomes exactly. a way of life exactly. now here let me jump on this because i'm trying to figure out why my boy go from you know being this doctor of health to novel writer <laughs> what's up with that the ancient nine is a book i've been writing for over 25 years it's a thriller it's based on my experiences in one of harvard's elite secret societies so when i was a senior I said, one day I'm going to write this story. So I literally, I wasn't even a writer then, as you can imagine. I'm just a you know, senior in college. I started writing what it took for me to get into the secret society at Harvard. Can't this get you beat up or something like that? Ain't revealing? you afraid of the secret society coming yeah. after you? Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of people that came after secret societies in our society, we don't hear from them anymore. <laughs> well, there's a little backstory here. So, you know, the way I got involved, these societies, by the way, started back in the 1700s. Yes. And the who's who of America has been members. You know, President Kennedy, right. President Teddy Roosevelt, right. Franklin Roosevelt, Supreme Court justices, you name it, they've been members. Matt Damon, the actor, is in my club. He mm -hmm. was the year behind me. So a lot of very famous people, rich people have been members. So the way I got in was one night, literally in the middle of the night, an envelope was slipped under my door. There was no postage Should on it. Should you be telling us all this? Well, it's in the book. So. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Too late. Yeah, it's in the ancient. So um, the, the envelope comes underneath the door. There's no postage, no return address. I open it up, and it says, the president and members of the Delphi Club invite you to a cocktail party, and it gives an address. Listen, I was, what, 18 years old? from a working class family. I didn't know what a cocktail party was. Mm. So I put the invitation to the side. I was like, uh, you know, whatever. This is one of these dweeby Harvard, you know, <laughs> organizations trying to act like an adult, right? right? So so I'm in the locker room after basketball practice two days later, and the older guys are talking about this is punch season. I had no idea what that meant. I thought they meant punch like you drink. Mm -hmm. No, punch is the word used when these secret societies invite you to begin the process of trying to join them. So mm -hmm. when they were talking, they mentioned the name on that invitation. And I was like, whoa, 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 that's, that's the name that looks like a weird name, the Delphi Club, mm -hmm. right? I, you know, I rolled back to my room, opened up an invitation, and they had invited me to go to the cocktail party for the Secret Society. And, you know, I, I went. So it was accidental that you even figured out. Yeah, was I, I, was, I wasn't going to go because it right. looked weird. It looked like, like I said, it looked like one of these organizations at Harvard where the kids are trying to act like adults you know, sipping cocktails and all that kind of stuff. And I went and it was, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. Like when my, my thing I remember most about that night was like the way the guys were talking. First of all, everyone wore like Rolex. They all have Rolexes and stuff. And one guy was saying to his other group, Hey, let's go to the Bahamas this weekend and we'll use um, my father's private plane. Uh -huh. He's not using it this weekend. And I was like, private plane. I didn't know private planes existed back then. Right. <laughs> so, um, 
anyway, this is the world of the secret societies, and the ancient nine is really a secret society within the secret society. Right. These are the guys who are protecting. For years, guys have tried to break into the club, by the way, mm -hmm. because of all the artifacts and the and the secrets that are in there, buried in the walls. Very famous things. And so the ancient nine protects the secrets of this group. What? Wow. All right, Dr. Ian. So here's my question. You got it. You are able to be a part of this club. Why do you think they asked you to be a member to be in this club? Had it to this day, I do not know. I mean, it's still a mystery. First of all, I'm everything that they are not. For example, I'm black. Uh, I was not, I was working class, poor, uh, no connections, no legacy. So I don't know why. And they, they, they didn't have to have like a certain amount of blacks in their organization. No, nah, no, nah, are like you kidding? That. They're only like, of the whole club, they're only like three or four blacks. The first black, I looked in the walls inside the clubhouse because we all have our pictures up for our ears. The first guy was in 76, tall dude with a fro. And I was like, man, imagine that guy was in here by himself. But I have no idea why they punched me, why they let me in. And it's to this day, You still don't know mystery. who, what, where, when, why. That's part of the secret society. It's crazy. It's crazy. But well, Nobody I never told you, hey, you know I'm the reason why you got No, nah, no, nah, that's how it works. Maybe they did their research on you and you like you did you go to a very They good knew high that you would be who you become. Well, yeah. you know, you know everyone at Harvard is smart. I mean, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm just saying, it's not I'm no it's I, degrees I, are smart. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't smart than anybody else, but the thing was, I couldn't figure out why they would want me into this club. And in the book The Ancient Nine in this book, you will find out why they wanted this character in. There was a reason why they wanted him in. But and, we don't know the reason why they wanted Dr. Ian Smith in. Right, you don't know that. I don't hmm. know that. Wow. Is that your assumption in the book? Why you think they let you in? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you read the book. and then, Read yeah, the book yeah. and find yeah. out. Okay, cool. cool so, cool. Dr. Ian, can you invite people into the secret society or? You can only, it's called punch. You can only punch a, a sophomore or a junior. You can punch them, but the committee inside the club has to That's agree so to great. who all okay. the punchies are. So, hmm. you, you're my boy. I say, I want you in. I'll go to the committee and say, hey, I want to punch Hatta. And they have to, by vote, say, and by the way, punching doesn't mean you get in. It means you just get invited to start the process. But you start with about 100 guys. Only 15 to 20 guys get in at the end of the day. And it's only guys. Down. How long they is the process? Down. About two months. It starts now. It's actually punch season is right now, actually. Uh-oh. In the fall. <laughs> so this book comes out just in time for them to have, <laughs> have a little reading for homework. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So crazy. how deep? Do you go in revealing? Because I, I, there has to be some secrecy. Because if you tell too much, I love you, Doctor Smith, but I know they'll come get you. Well, so how how deep are you allowed? Well, to I do here? say it is a novel. Okay, all right, okay, okay. there you go. But I do say based on real events, <laughs> okay. and I've already had members who read it, and they actually like it. Like they, you know, I'm telling kind of our process. I don't give you all the details okay, of the process, all right, all right. but you know how we get. You in. Understand how you understand well, how we okay, get in, okay. and um, there are some. So there are two things. One, the book opens up in 1927. Two guys are trying to break into the Delphic Mansion. One guy disappears. Fast forward to the 80s when I'm in school mm -hmm. and the character, main character who is me, is in school. Um, he starts getting punched to join this club. You say he was in school in the 80s. I'm looking at him like he just turned 32 oh, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago. But anyway, this guy is trying to connect these two famous books at Harvard. Mm -hmm. There's one book that was in the private library, King James I. Oh, wow. A very famous book. And the other book was the last book remaining of John Harvard's collection because the rest of the collection got burned up in a fire in the 1700s. Mm. The one book didn't get burned up because the student forgot to return to the library. So those two books are under lock and key at Harvard. And so this student, who's me, is trying to piece together the ancient nine and the disappearance of this student from the 20s and these two famous Harvard books. Cool. Cool. So it took you 25 years to put it all together. Now's the right time. You finally got it out there. How's it feel? It feels good because people are loving it. You know, it, you know, there's a little love story in the middle of it. Uh, but the reviews have been awesome. Uh, just got option to be a movie. Uh, really? So, what? yeah, knock on wood. Yeah, man. thanks, man. Wow. Thanks. Wow. thanks. Knock on wood that Looking it happened. For any actors? <laughs> <laughs> Did you call Matt Damon for this? Uh, no, I didn't actually. So he's going to find out about it. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited that it's option. Uh, and people are just loving it because it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a fun read. All right, so now that you're doing the novel deal, so this, does this mean that the whole diet, exercise, life is gone now? Oh, and no. And you're a novelist? No, 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 I'm doing both. Yeah. You can be left side and right side. That's what mm. I believe. So, uh, no, in April I got an, another book coming out called Clean and Lean. Oh, which he's is, okay. Which is, which is, by the way, getting people to do what you just did, which is to clean them out but also lean them out. What you just did is exactly yes, like the prototype of Clean and Lean, so that's coming out in April. Uh, but this is this is here and now. Every year I want to do a, a, a novel and I want to do a nonfiction. Oh wow! Okay, good luck with that. I know you can do it though. I know you can do it. You're, you're just a busy man. How do you, how do you maintain? Because I know you got family and the kids and the whole nine. 
you know what? I just take advantage of every moment. Like, you know, I'm in the gym this morning working out while I'm on the road. I try to keep my routine like I do at home while I'm on the road. Really? So when I go home, there's no kind of accommodation or, you know, readjustment. So I just, you know, I'm up early this morning working out, eating here with you guys. I'll work, work all day, get home and just kind of smooth back into my life like it was. That's the only way to do it. Otherwise, you always have these adaption periods, which is, you know, losing time. Okay, I got you. Jim, you over there. Yeah, I, I was wondering, you know, because it's, it's been like 10 years, almost 10 years since the show's been off the air, but do people still, like, recognize you from Celebrity Fit, Fit Club? Oh, man, yeah. they love that. I mean, there may be, I think, given all these reboots that are happening, right, Murphy Brown's getting rebooted. Yeah, yeah. I love Murphy Brown, by the way. But people are saying, why not reboot Celebrity Fit Club? Yeah. So we'll see what happens. You know, it was a fun show. It was a good time. And all of us are still... Doing our thing. The yeah. drill sergeant Harvey's doing his thing. Stacy Kaiser is a psychologist. So yeah, it, it may be possible. I guess a question about that show. Was there was there one incident or one one person on there that you thought, you know, this this person, this this thing is just crazy. This is kind of spun out of control or someone you dealt with. Well, you know, Dustin Diamond was a fool to get screech from Saved by the Bell. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and there was one scene, it's on Google somewhere where, you know, Harvey was getting ready to beat him down because he threatened our host. And, you know, Harvey was getting ready to jump over the, the judges' table and start fighting this dude. And I'm trying to hold him back. It was, you know, I, sh I played it for my kids the other day. They were laughing. It was crazy. The other scene is Takara, um, who was the plus-size model um, mm -hmm. uh, from America's Next Top Model, mm -hmm. uh, who just lost it on me. She went crazy on me. And I just kept well, I don't remember that. I think she, I remember that. She was you? upset because she felt as though that when she came up to the scale, I was more critical of her and was not as laudatory as I was of the other people, which is absolutely not true. I'm I was the same with everyone. In fact, she's like a little sister to me. So I, you know, I was really nice to her. And she was just having an off day and was like, mm. I come up here and I work, blah, blah, blah. You gotta see this clip. And all I say is, have some class, Takara. Have some class. Oh and no, she, you can't say I that did, to a I black did. boy. <laughs> <laughs> You knew you pushed yeah, that well, button. Yeah. What am I going to do? I, you knew I didn't want to cuss her. Look, you pushed she the button. She's yelling and screaming. She got a hand pushed, in my face. Come on, that's sister code. You, you, you knew what you were doing. You knew what you, you were doing. You now, if it was Jimbo, I like Jimbo. That's wrong. You can't do that. You know better. <laughs> Jimbo, I know, better. I know you don't. You, you know better. We don't have to go into details here. All right. Anyway, the book is called The Ancient Nine. They can get the book where? Uh, everywhere at Amazon. We also got a $2,500 contest. Check it out. Right. Go to our Facebook page, The Ancient Nine, spelled nine. If you can solve the mystery, you get twenty five hundred cash. Okay. Dollar bills. So okay. it's 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 on our Facebook page, the what? Ancient Nine. Yeah, it's cool. There are three questions you gotta sets of questions you gotta answer related to the mystery in the book. Okay. And if they can you guys can do it too. Money. Okay. I'll do it. You can do it. This one right here. It has to be. I like mystery. Don't it has to be. It has to be food like attached mystery, to it. Okay? <laughs> food and drink has to be attached to it. We know how you really work. <laughs> and you can my, do, go yeah, ahead. Instagram too, by the way. My Instagram is at Doctor Ian Smith. Spell the doctor out. I A N Smith. I'll post it there. And my Twitter is D R I A N Smith. All right, Doctor Smith. Good luck to you on the book. It's called The Ancient Nine. Y'all go get the book today. Number one New York Times bestseller. And it's always good to see you, brother. Thank you so All right, much.